Welcome to this wonderful morning here in the Talmud Tavern here in Lost Relics. If you played already Lost Relics, then maybe it will be interesting, maybe it will be not. I have really, really big news for you. If you're playing at the moment and you're updated, then it will be nothing new for you. Maybe you know it already, maybe don't. But if you haven't played Lost Relics or you have played Lost Relics in the past and stopped it due to the closed market for blockchain items and the insane ether Ethereum gas prices, which causes a real pain for the in-game market of blockchain items. Then I'll have really big news for you. If you want to only get the big news, no big deal, just jump to the end. I'll tell you everything at the end because this video will be about the summary of my first four weeks of playing Lost Relics. And like you see here at the top right corner, I last activated a 30 day power pendant and it's gone for 20 days already. This 30 day power pendant was bought from me in game with in game gold. That means I grinded for it, I played the game, I farmed gold and then I bought a power pendant from this gold I got. And Today we want to look at what I got until now and I want to update you weekly so you know what's going on here in my account, what I've been up to or maybe like today we have big news so maybe you'll get the big news in the future in my weekly updates, maybe I'll do an additional video for the big news we will see but today we'll look at the things which happened here for me and in addition to this 30 day power pendant uh, before that I had a 7 day power pendant that was bought with real money so this wasn't farmed I bought it for I think ten dollars or so um, and so I'm around four weeks in this game it's not exactly four weeks but it's round about four weeks and let's just look what I got because I just turned level 36 and if we look here at the champion rewards then you see the things I got already and the last one is this 30 second speed boost at the start of each adventure. I haven't tried it yet but I will try it and I'll keep you updated in the next video and I'm really really curious about this because in Lost Relics it's about how fast you can run a dungeon how fast you can kill the enemies and especially how fast or better said how much gold you get per hour because you want the most return on your invested time and that's the reason why I think this 30 second speed boost will be a great addition not too strong because it shouldn't be an addition which is overpowered which if you're under 30 uh, under level 36 and you haven't got the speed boost it would be insane if it was the whole adventure with the speed boost and you'll only need half of the time for an adventure that would be insane that would be unfair 
the game should be balanced. Yeah, you should get better improvements with each level and you get a little bit extra but even if you look at everything if even if you put all together the additional relic slots are very good but you have three relic slots at the beginning and you get the fourth relic slot and the fifth relic slot it's nice to have but you don't necessarily need it it's a nice addition but you don't need it to grind this game and so i'll think this will be a great addition but it's not an improvement like you'll only need half of of the time for a dungeon or so and today we want to look in my stash we want to put it all together what i got until now and let's uh, let's just summarize what we got before we look in the stash just a quick overview of my current skills these are my gathering skills mining is not that high because I nearly only farmed it in the beginning with arcane pits and forgotten chambers and as soon as I stepped up to Ashwoods and as soon as I got this epic blockchain bow here I switched to the maps here you can see forgotten chambers is the first one then arcane pits is a bit more difficult but not that much Ashwoods is a bit bigger and Ashwoods is currently the map which I'm grinding because of these amber grapes you get there. This is at the current moment the map which has the most gold per hour ratio for me. If I step up a little bit maybe I'll switch to trail woods, maybe I'll switch to Odin's Spire Sands more, but let's just leave this at the side. Currently I'm grinding ash woods mostly because I want to get up my wood cutting. And we just look a little bit in the skill book. If you look at wood cutting for example, then you want to get at least to level 31 because there you get the blue blockchain wood and in addition these mysterious nests and there you can get some blockchain items some blockchain relics or you don't have that much luck and you'll only get quail eggs where are they there or here these quail eggs can be there too this would be not that good but you have the chance to get really really valuable blockchain items and that's the reason why I want to get to level 31 in woodcutting and if we just have a short look here at mining then you'll see at level 24 you get the green rock die and this is the first uncommon blockchain item. I'll show it in mining because if you look at fishing level 24 is nothing, scavenging level 24 is nothing and also in woodcutting level 24 has something but not the uncommon blockchain items. And we want to look at the blockchain items and at level 24 you get to a level where you get to farm blockchain items with your gathering levels. Due to the closed market where you can't trade the blockchain items where yeah, this uncommon stuff is sold like you see for 1.4 engine this is 
a few months ago the engine price was way lower than now so i think this will be less than one engine but at level 24 you get to the point where you can farm blockchain items and currently there is only the mining one left because the other ones they all are limited and the other ones are already farmed completely and that's the reason while you only get the green rock die from mining and you don't get for example in scavenging at level 24 there were blue blossoms if you look here at the map again and here in Odin's Sands, then you'll see these blue blossoms and you don't see them in the skills book because the loot pool is dry every every blossom of this 24938 blossoms are farmed they are in a stash like mine but i don't have one of these but they are all farmed and that's the reason why you can't get one of these and you want to get like i said in my last video of the summary of the lost relics easter event you want to have an economy you have to want uh yeah you want an economy with a decent dynamic where blockchain item are transferred every minute and so on it should be a high demand but at the current moment there is a high demand for items for example if you look at engineering you'll need for your better tools you'll need mostly these steel ingots and they are also farmed completely there is nothing left in the loot pool and you'll need these for your better tools and if you can't trade them or like you see i have one of these steel ingots i could craft a pickaxe or even a normal axe the scissors aren't craftable for me because i only got one of these steel ingots but i could craft one of these items if i had the required level of engineering but i used nearly all my farmed materials to get up my crafting levels and now i have to farm more but especially if you get uh, if you want to get up your crafting levels to a higher level then you'll have to buy stuff from other people and as long as the market is closed as long as you can't trade the steel ingots or for example other stuff like this bronze ingot or something as long as this is not doable as long as you can't trade these items there is a stopped economy in this game and not only in this game but also in many many other games and that's the reason why you'll need a certain market for it. Maybe you heard of the engine upgrade with JumpNet where you can transfer blockchain items or better said NFTs on JumpNet with a very low or a very decent cost per transfer and in addition you can mint new items or you can mint new nfts on jumpnet for free 
you just have to put in the backed jump net engine uh, so that your items get a fixed value or a value which is at least the backed engine and you'll need more dynamic in this game not only in this game but in all games it needs a certain fluctuation of these items and we'll need to see this dynamic in this game and we'll want just or i want just to summarize the blockchain things i got until now we start with the two Lambos and my Penny Presto skin because these three things I bought in the Easter sale I uh, paid around $60 for them and I assume the Lambos will be at least $25 each and the skin will be at least $50 that doesn't mean I will sell them at this point but I assume that these items will be worth at least this much or this much and so just summarize these three things together to uh, yeah and the skin I assume will be at least $50 and together it's around $100 I think it will be more because I won't sell my Lambos for $25 but we just assume things here because we can't trade things at the moment there is no real market for these things for example this sheep here was last sold for 80 engine that would be around 120 260 dollars at the moment i don't know the engine price exactly but it would be over 100 dollars for a blue sheep and these blue pads can be bought mostly on the website shop these aren't limited pads everyone can get one and I just assume that these pets will be worth around five to ten dollars, so not that much. In addition, I got from the Easter event the Bunny Badger. It's also a pet, but this one is limited to only seven hundred pieces. And that's the reason why I think this one will be worth way more. So let's just assume $10 for this sheep, $10 for this dog, and for this bunny badger, let's just assume, like the Lambo, around $25. Uh, maybe it will be more, maybe it will be less. There, This is... Uh, there are, these are just assumptions, this way, uh, because there is no real trade until now. And in addition, I have got some materials. I said I'm four weeks into Lost Relics. I got this epic Shorawell, uh, Shoraway Coral Weed. This ring, these gems, these two demon cloths, these three gems and this gem. The last few things, or yeah, the last four things, these gems and the demon cloth, don't have any value yet. These aren't, uh, these weren't traded until now because the market is closed at the moment and the ring and this weed was sold already but it 
won't sell for 33 engine like you see here because these are prices from a few months ago the engine price was way lower than today and this is the reason why this will be not worth 33 engine this would be insane nobody would pay 33 engine to or for a blockchain item which could possibly be traded in for a bounty where you can get maybe a gold chest which has the chance of getting you really really good blockchain weapons or blockchain relics or so but also there is a high percentage that you only get gold from these chests and this is the reason why I don't think this will be sold for 33 engine anymore. But just put this all together. We said the Lambo and my skin will be around $100. This weed maybe 10 maybe $15 at maximum. Plus this ring, these gems. We put it all together. Uh, yeah, let's just assume, round it up a bit. Let's just assume this will be worth nearly $50. So just say, oh, let's just say we're at $150 in total. In addition, there is this pet with around $10, this pet with around $10, and this with around $25, like the Lambo. But let's just round it up again, because I won't sell my Lambos for $25. So let's just say with these things, we're round about at $200. The last material I got, this was just this week or yeah, five days ago or so. And like I showed you before, the steel ingot is needed for crafting better tools. And due to the closure of the markets, and the reason that you can't trade blockchain items, the current tools are priced very high. You have to pay an insane gold price for these tools. But as soon as the market for the steel ingots, because many people will be like me with level 9 or even lower, who has steel ingots but can't craft the tools because the level is too low. And to get to this level, like you see, I don't have the iron ingots or the iron ore. I'll need way more materials to get my engineering to at least level 11. And this is an insane run only the running to the anvil and back to the stash because you only have 18 inventory slots and you'll run to the anvil you craft your items you run back to the stash you run to the anvil you run back to the stash it takes very much time to do this and that's the reason why many people don't have yeah the how do i say it uh they don't want to get up their gathering uh, they don't want to level up their crafting levels because it's just running to the anvil or for cooking to the cooking station and so on 
and it needs an insane amount of time where you don't have the chance of dropping some special blockchain items like you have in the adventures and that's the reason why many people don't want to level up their crafting skills and many steel ingots are trapped inside of accounts like mine which could craft these tools if they had the level for it but currently at the moment it's just laying here in my stash and I can't do anything with it and th that is yeah, not really annoying but it stops the dynamic of the game because many people can't use it many people have it but can't craft anything with it and that's the reason why the steel ingot and many other things don't go back in the loot pool nobody can drop it nobody can find it and that's the reason why the price of the tools are so insanely high but we will be in a few minutes at the point where I tell you the big news and this is about trading these blockchain items and this will be the starting point where the dynamic of lost relics gets to flow where everything starts where everything gets to a certain dynamic level where you can get and steady yeah not income but steady blockchain items which you drop in the dungeons because these are used very often they don't lie in the stash like in mine because the people who don't want to level up their crafting skills they can trade these steel ingots for example to other people and then the other people can craft the tools and then these materials go back in the loot pool and this is the minimum requirement we need to get this game to a point where you uh, where we can earn a certain steady income it's not that i say you'll earn a decent amount of income where you can put your job away or something it's just an additional earning i would say so let's just summarize these things we said hundred dollars for my bought things then the pets in addition the materials we have around two hundred dollars and the last thing which is blockchain here is my epic blockchain bow uh i assume that it will be around hundred dollars i heard that some epic weapons get bought for maybe fifty dollars or so but in addition this bow has an effect with 10 percent extra damage to flying monsters and that's the reason why i think this blockchain bow will be worth at least hundred dollars so in total we're at at least three hundred dollars in my opinion it can be more it can be less we'll see that as soon as the trades are open as soon as a price for these items is established and so on and we can put the rest of this together i don't go to the emporium now because i don't want to make this any longer 
I think I got around $300 of blockchain items until now. It's okay for one month of playing Lost Relics. And I even had the thought or the assumption that I wouldn't drop anything. At the start where I got in my first week this epic uh, material, there I had the assumption that you can earn a decent amount of money with this game. But then I realized due to the insane Ethereum gas prices, due to the closure of the market, there is not that much stuff which can be dropped, which can be turned in for real money. And so I have to say, it's yeah, not that much really. And if you put uh, my investments in here, because I bought the Lambor and I bought the skin, and also at the beginning I bought the 7 day power pendant, which I said earlier. And in total this was around $70 of investment for me. So if we put this together we're at around $230 which I could possibly earn with this game. But not as long as the market is closed, not as long as nothing can be sold, and so on. And in addition, I won't sell my epic blockchain bow, because if you saw my last video of the summary of the Lost Relics Easter event, there I said already that this blockchain bow is making my life here in Lost Relics way more easier so I would say I won't sell this bow until I get a better bow maybe I'll keep it even after I get a better bow depends on what bow I get because if you look here at the map there you have, for example, Epic can be used down to Ashwoods. In Arcane Pits, I can't use it anymore. Ashwoods can be used. Trailwoods, Shallow Swamps is up to Legendary. And Odin Sparrow Sands is Mythical. So, if I should get a Mythical Bow... This would be the scenario in which I would keep my epic bow. Because if I got a mythical bow, I could only do Olden Spar Sands, the Caverns and Mount. Because I can't go in in Trail Woods, I can't go in in Shallow Swamps and Ash Woods, of course not. So I think this will be part of my account a very long time but I will keep you updated on this so if you say the epic bow will be around hundred dollars it's around three hundred dollars 230 if we subtract my investments and like I said, in the Emporium I have a bit more items which should be sold for gold. These are investments. I also have some more of this Egg Demons. Uh, the Egg Demon was a prize in the Easter event. It's a virtual relic. Like you see here. And yeah... They are up in the Emporium, but not to the current market price. And a few other stuffs. And if I put all together, I should be at around 
300k of gold suddenly my liquidity is at 9000 gold but the stuff i have in my stash and the stuff i have in the emporium this will be a, an additional 300 thousand dollar eh, not dollars uh gold and if you saw this game already or you played the game already then you know that you can turn in gold for example at the moment for a ninja skin it's a mythical one you'll need over 500k of gold and as I think that this ninja skin will be around $500 of worth at least, my assumption is that the gold will be worth around $1 per 1k of gold. So if I put my 300k gold to this uh this will be an additional 300 dollars which is still not real money because i don't have the skin yet i don't know if i if i'll get one maybe if i'm lucky and i'm fast enough i'll get one maybe not but i think there will be possibilities to trade in your gold for special stuff there will always be a decent level of trading gold for example if you look here at the wood cutting again these mysterious nests can be bought with gold from other persons and you have the chance of getting maybe legendary maybe higher tier blockchain items which can be worth mm, a decent amount of money and I mean real money here because this blockchain items can be sold for real money and so in total I would assume that I'm around 500 to 600 maybe a bit more uh, dollar, dollars of worth in this account and I don't even got to level 24 with one of my skills yet and I would say level 24 at least at one gathering level should be the minimum to get a steady income of blockchain items because there it starts there you get farmable blockchain materials and that will be needed very much but due to the reason that you can't get that much at the moment we'll come to the end of this video and we'll come to the big big news which are here in lost relics and maybe you heard of jump nets maybe you heard not of it i don't know if you haven't heard of jump net yet just research it it is an upgrade of the engine blockchain and this alone is a big step forward but it don't affect the items, for example, uh, like this sheep or uh, they are not minted yet. Uh, this one, for example. This material is already minted on the engine blockchain, but it's not on the jumpnet blockchain and if you want to get it on the jumpnet blockchain you still have to pay these insane high ethereum gas prices 
and that's not supportable from a game and there we have the big news which the developer of Lost Relics announced a few days ago and that is the yeah how do I call it uh, that is a in-game shop where for example let's assume my stash here is this new in-game shop it's not added yet it will be added in the next updates maybe directly in the next one maybe in the next two ones maybe in three ones we'll have to wait how long it takes but in the next few weeks I assume there will be another in-game shop not only the Royal Emporium where you can trade your virtual items for in-game gold there will be another shop for blockchain items where you can list these blockchain items you can say for example okay uh, let's just assume I have these five Delta diamonds and I want to sell each of those for one engine then I can go to this in-game shop I can put my order up like in the Royal Emporium and I can sell this to another person for a little in-game fee and it's nearly fee-less because of the reason that these Delta Diamonds are still in-game. I haven't extracted them out of the game, I haven't extracted them in my wallet and as long as they stay in-game they are, if you want to say it this way, you can say that these blockchain items are still the yeah the uh, <laughs> are still in the stash or are still in the wallet of the developer of this game because I haven't distracted them yet and as long as they stay in the wallet of the developer he can just uh, say that the trade where someone of you will buy my delta diamonds you pay one engine per diamond and then you'll get your delta diamonds but they still stay in the wallet of the developer of this game so there is no real transfer on the blockchain and that's the reason why we can avoid these insane high ethereum gas prices it doesn't solve every problem in this game because there are people who extracted their material or their their weapons or something extracted it from the game into their own in uh, into their own wallet and into their own or maybe they put it up for sale on engine x or another marketplace and now these blockchain items are not longer in the game and if this is the case this new shop won't be a good addition for them but for all people who have their blockchain stuff in the game well the they don't extract it, the things into their own wallet as long as these things stay in the wallet of the developer they can be traded in the new upcoming shop 
nearly feeless. And that will be such a great improvement. Just imagine this case, for example, all the people who are not level 36, who are not engineering level 9 and on their way to level 11 or level 16 or level 20 or whatever, everyone which has or who has these materials can trade their blockchain items in game for real money. You don't pay with in-game gold, you still pay with real money from your engine wallet, but you don't have to pay the insane high gas prices of Ethereum because engine is on the uh, Ethereum blockchain and that's the reason why we have to look at the Ethereum gas prices. And still it's not perfect. It's not the way that this is the end, that this is the last step to fulfill this game or so. But it's the first step to get an increased dynamic and increased fluctuation of these items because as soon as people can buy these steel ingots, as soon as people can sell their steel ingots, there are people that are happy that they can buy these steel ingots and there are people who don't want to play that much that they get to a certain crafting level and they are happy if they get one dollar or two dollars for a steel ingot and that will be the starting point of the increased fluctuation of items in this game it will be the starting point for so many things because as soon as people can buy these things and people will buy these things they'll use it for crafting these pickaxes these other axes these scissors and if you go further then you have here the brunid ingot which is used for the blue pickaxe and then the blue normal axe where you need uh, steel ingots again and so on and as soon as these items are tradable there will be a point where the gold prices of these tools will drop because there is way more supply of these items which will benefit especially new players because at the moment for example this uh, this rod you'll get for around 10 gold because you'll only need two virtual items and no blockchain item but if you look at this uh, steel ingot which you need for the pickaxe uh, the pickaxe is around 15k gold so there is an insane difference of these two tool tools and that will be improved so hard with this job as I said it will not solve every problem absolutely not absolutely not but it's the starting point where many many people can start to sell their items and so much people are looking forward to this so much people are curious about the moment where they can sell their items where they can get real money out of this game because I'm one of the people 
who doesn't have a problem with the fact that if I can't sell these materials in the next weeks, I'll trade them in for some bounties or I just lay, uh, let them lay here in my stash or whatever. I would turn them in for bounties. I also would craft, uh, yeah, not a pickaxe. I wanted to craft a normal axe because a few days ago I hadn't one. Now I got one because I bought it with in-game gold because it was way cheaper to buy this axe alone. Uh, it costs me around 16,000 or so. No, 18,000 gold. And to upgrade my engineering from level 9 to level 16, I calculated around... 180,000 gold in cost for the materials I need to get to this level. And this is too, ins uh, too insane for me at this point. So I need a bit longer to get my engineering up to this level. Not only the running time to get this to this certain level but also the gold I need to buy the materials from other people to level up this, these skills. This will be insane but I want to level up uh, my crafting skills and I'm ready to put in this steel ingot for an axe or a pickaxe or whatever. And I don't get real money for it, because I sell it for in-game gold then. But it's no problem for me. I want to support this whole dynamic of this game. I want to support the ecosystem of this game. And there will be some sort of people who only want to be gatherer. Who, who will level up their gathering skills like here fishing or mining or whatever uh, other people are more like the crafting people who are crazy as fuck uh, because they run hours after hours and more hours to get their crafting levels to the top um, but there will also be people who want just to run the maps they don't want to farm there because I know some people who play for example Odin Spire Sands and yeah you got around yeah seven or eight mining spots also and around the same with bushes to scavenge uh, but they don't have any tools with them. They just want to kill the enemies. They want just to open the treasure boxes or the treasure chests. And they just want to get this lucky drop of a nice blockchain weapon or a nice blockchain item. But they don't want to level up their gathering skills. I can understand this totally because if you uh, gather everything in every adventure I assume you need at least double the time for each adventure and that's a point where the gold per hour ratio could be way better but in the long term run if you want to get a steady income of blockchain items 
then in my opinion you have to level up your gathering skills or maybe you'll go the way where you level up your crafting skills and you get a decent amount of in-game gold because if you're if you're the one who can buy in the new upcoming blockchain shop the blockchain items and you're the one crafting the tools for everyone and you're the only one who can craft them then you can set a price for these items and you can get a decent amount of in-game gold which can be traded in many ways to real money too and yeah i would call this an end this video is way too long but i hope you liked it i'm really really curious about the future about the upcoming shop where you can trade blockchain items i don't know when it will happen but as soon as it will happen i will update you of course uh in the latest spot i'll update you in my weekly lost relics updates uh just shortly that you know i said the loot pools are dry you can't drop many items but in the first week i got this weed uh in the second week i got these gems in the third week i got these demon cloths and this uh this ring and in the last uh week i got the steel ingot and so although the loot pools are nearly dry nearly nothing is droppable I got every week a blockchain item so in summary I earned every week real money not to this point as soon as the shop will open but you'll see you can earn money with this game but it needs time to get the shop up to get the ecosystem in a better fluctuation and so on so i hope you're curious with me uh i hope you'll stay updated if you liked the video if you liked my summary of my first month i would love to see your like on this video if you play lost relics already then leave a comment down below let's just chat with each other let's just hang out together because i'm very curious about the future updates where the multiplier multiplier multiplayer update will come where we can do some things together maybe we can group up maybe we can do stuff together it will be really really nice but as you see it's still a pre-release version it's not a completely finished game it's a game which will develop step after step and we will see so much more added value in this game we will see so much more added content in this game so much more gameplay I think we will also see some sort of housing I don't know how this turns out maybe just to put your pets inside your own house or maybe you can earn or maybe you can own a decent building of the town I don't know what way the developer will go but if you have any assumptions let me know in the comments if you don't play lost relics and you want to know how you can earn money and when you can earn money or you have any questions regarding this game 
then leave it in the comment. I'll come to you as soon as possible and we will see each other. I hope we will play together in the future and I wish you a very, very nice day. See you in the next video, in the weekly updates and let's just have fun with blockchain gaming. Let's earn some NFTs, let's earn some crypto and let's earn some real riches with this game, with other games and so on. I'm very curious about the future. I hope we'll meet and let's see you next time.